Hi guys, good morning. How are you guys doing today? Good, I'm glad you guys are doing well. Do you guys remember how we have been talking about con comparing and contrasting? So today we are going to be comparing and contrasting two or some short stories. So do you guys remember the meaning of compare and contrast? So can someone tell me what comparing means? Yes, comparing means that we're going to be looking at what's the same between two different stories. And then can someone tell me what contrasting means? Yes, good job. Contrasting is finding out what's different between two stories. I'm going to write those down so you guys can remember what they mean and you guys can reference it when we're reading these two stories, okay? All right. And when we're also comparing and contrasting two different stories, it's important to know what the characters are, what the problem is, what the solution is, and what the theme is so that we can compare all different sorts of parts of the story. So do you guys remember what those are? Yeah? Okay. So can someone tell me what a character is? Yeah, good job. The characters are people or animals in a story that the story is about. Good job. So can someone tell me what a problem is? Yeah, good job. It's the issue that occurs in the story. Good job. So then what would be the solution? Good job. That's when a um, issue is fixed, correct? Yeah. So then what would be a theme? Yes, the theme is the main topic of the story. Or the main, yeah, the main topic of the story. And then I'm going to write all of those down so then you guys can remember those while we're also going over the stories. So I'm going to start off and I'm going to read two short stories to you guys. And I'm going to go over what the similarities and the differences I see in each of those. And I'm going to write it down in a chart that we are going to have to fill out. So the first story is Alicia's Kite. James and Alicia were running through the park with their kites flying behind them in the wind. The wind changed suddenly and Alicia's, flight, Alicia's kite flew into the branches of a tree. No matter how hard Alicia pulled the kite string, it would not budge. Give me a boost, Alicia said to the James, and he held his hands for her to use as a step. With his help, she pulled up to the first branch and pulled the kite down. All right, so that was the first story. Now here's the second story. Max gets lost. Kylie was at the park with her dog, Max. She threw a ball for him to fetch when suddenly a rabbit ran by. Max chased after the rabbit and when it ran into some bushes, Max followed. Kylie called for Max, but he didn't return. She looked through the bushes and couldn't see him or the rabbit anywhere. After looking all over, she heard laughter and shouting from a baseball field where she could see a large black dog chasing after a baseball in the middle of the game. It was Max. So those were the two short stories. And now I'm going to go over what the similarities and the differences between each of them are. So we're going to look at the characters first. How are they alike and how are they different? So in Alicia's Kite, both characters are people. And then there's no other people mentioned that are around them. In Max, in the story Max Gets Lost, the characters are Kylie and her dog Max. And there's no other people in the park. Or, and there are other people in the park. So then the similarities between both of those are that the, both of the stories, there are characters that enjoy playing in the park. So that's how we are, the similarities and the differences between the characters. So now we're going to go over what the problem is and how is it similar and how is it different. So in Alicia's Kite, the wind made Alicia's Kite become stuck in a tree. 
in Max Gets Lost, Max chased a rabbit in some bushes and got lost. But the similarity between them is both stories have a missing or unusable item, a kite and a dog. So that's how they're similar. So now we're going to look at the solution and how is the problem solved? So in Alicia's kite, Alicia asked James to give her a boost so she can climb up the tree and grab her kite. And Max gets lost, Kylie looked all over for Max. She found him in the baseball field where she heard laughter. So the similarity between those two are both Alicia and Kylie worked hard to solve the problem. So now we're going to go to the theme. So what's the main topic of these stories? So in Alicia's kite, Alicia's kite becomes stuck in the tree. So she and her friend James must get it down. And Max gets lost. Kylie tries to find her dog lost in the park. The similarities between both of them are both stories are about playing and problem solving in a park. So now that I have gone over those and how I would compare and contrast the two different stories, we are going to do one together. The two stories that we are going to read are The Frog Prince and Beauty and the Beast, and we are going to compare and contrast both of those afterwards. So here's the first one, The Frog Prince. And we're going to have to listen closely for the characters, the problem, the solution, and the theme. And I wrote those down, so remember, you can always look at that if you need help remembering. So, the frog prince. In a faraway land, a princess was enjoying the cool evening breeze outside her family's castle. She had her a small golden ball, which she loved to play with as a way to relax. On one particular toss, she threw it so high in the air that she lost track of it and the ball went rolling towards a spring. The ball plopped into the water and quickly sank out of sight. The princess began sobbing in a despair and wished for her toy to return to her. Then a small frog popped out from the spring. What's wrong, beautiful princess? asked the frog. The princess wiped away her tears and said, My favorite golden ball is gone and nothing I do will bring it back. The frog tried his best to comfort the princess and assured her that he could retrieve the ball if she would grant him one favor. Anything! I will give you all of my jewels and handfuls of gold, exclaimed the princess. The frog explained that he had no need for riches and he only wanted a simple kiss from her in return. The thought of kissing a slimy frog made the princess shudder, but in the end she agreed as she had loved her golden ball. Would you guys want to kiss a frog? No, me either. It's a little gross, isn't it? So, without much effort, the agile frog jumped back into the spring and located the golden ball. In a blink of an eye, the frog had retrieved the ball and returned it to the princess. Keeping her word, the princess kissed the frog. Suddenly, the ground began to rumble and a haze of smoke filled the air. To the princess's surprise, the frog was really a handsome prince trapped by an evil witch's curse. Her kiss had freed the prince from a lifetime of pain and misery. The prince and the princess became great friends and eventually wed in a beautiful ceremony by that spring. So now, that was a good story, right? Yeah. Now we're going to read Beauty and the Beast. So once, long ago, a merchant on his travels stumbled upon a beautiful rose garden. Thinking that no one would miss one red rose, he cut one at its stem. Scarcely had he done so when he heard a terrible noise, and turning around, he saw coming towards him a hideous beast who explained in an awful tone, Who are you, thief, who steals my roses? For this you must die. The merchant fell on his knees and begged for pardon, but the beast would not listen to him. Either you must die now, or else you must swear to me to send instead your first living thing that meets you on your return home, he said. And the merchant, overcome with terror, gave his promise. But to his horror and dismay, it was his 
daughter, Beauty, who first ran out to greet him on his return. He shook his head mournfully upon seeing her, but there was no help for it. He had promised to send the beast the first living creature that he had met on his return. So he was obliged to send Beauty herself in his place. When he left Beauty at the palace of the beast, she found everything prepared for her comfort and convenience. A beautiful bedchamber was ready for her use. The rooms were filled with everything that she could possibly want. And in great hall of the castle, a table was set with very delicacy, with every delicacy. And everywhere there was bowls full of red roses. Beauty was filled with astonishment at all this luxury and magnificence. Surely the beast does not wish to harm me, she thought, or he would never have ordered everything for my comfort. And she waited with good courage for the coming of the lord of the castle. In the evening, the beast appeared. He was certainly very terrible to look at. The beauty trembled at the sight of the hideous monster. She was forced herself to appear brave, and indeed there was no cause for her alarm. The beast was kindness itself, and so gentle and respectful in his attention to her in that beauty soon lost all, of fe all her fear. She soon became very fond of him. One night, as she lay in a bed, she had a dream. She dreamt that she saw the beast dying, and that and she had became very so fond of him, and so real did it seem that she woke up in agony of dismay. Hastily rising from the bed, she searched through room after room, but nowhere she could find him. At last she ran into the garden, and there, on a plot of glass where she or on a pot a plot of grass where he and she had often sat together, she found him lying as if dead upon the ground. With a bitter cry she sank to her knees knees beside the poor beast. Oh beast, my dear, dear beast, she cried as tears fell down from her eyes as she spoke. Overcome with grief, she stood down and tenderly kissed the ugly beast. In a moment, there was a sudden noise, and Beauty was startled to find that the ugly beast had vanished. The beast was a, the beast, was a beast no longer, but a handsome prince who knelt at her feet, thanking her for having broken, broken his enchantment. A wicked fairy, he said, condemned me to keep the form of a beast until a beautiful maiden should forget my ugliness and kiss me. You, by your love and tenderness, have broken the spell and released me from my horrible disguise. Now, thanks to you, I can take my proper form again. And then he begged Beauty to become his bride. So Beauty married the prince who had been a beast and they lived together in a castle and they were happy. So now that we read those stories, I know they were a little bit long, but we are going to go back over before we start to create the chart and we're going to highlight everything like the characters and we're going to highlight the problem, the solution and the theme. So then when we go to do our chart, when we're comparing and contrasting them, we can look at it and we can see where we underlined and we're going to underline in, them in different colors. So characters are going to be red. The problem is going to be blue. The solution is going to be green and the theme is going to be yellow. So let's go ahead and do that right now, okay? You can work with a partner to underline the characters, the problem, the solution, and the theme. All right, now that you guys have done that, we are going to go over the similarities and the differences. So the characters, how are the characters alike and how are they different? So in the Frog Prince, what is the characters? How are the characters different? Yeah, good job. The character's a frog. There's a frog in there. So in Beauty and the Beast, what is different about it? Yes, it's a beast. Good job. So how are they similar? Good job. Both have young girls in it. And there's a non-human that becomes a prince, right? Good job. So now we're going to look at the problem. So what was the problem in the frog prince? 
Yeah, the girl had lost her golden ball. Good job. So then what was the problem in Beauty and the Beast? Yeah, the problem was that a man cut down a stem or a rose by the stem and he was either going to die or he had to give the first living thing he found when he got home. So how were they similar? Yeah, the princess and the merchant both had to do something they didn't want to do, right? And what were those things? Do you remember? Yeah, good job. The girl had to kiss the frog and the merchant had to give his first living thing that he had found. So I can also think about another problem that was in the story, but we didn't know until the end. What was it? In both stories. Yeah, both the frog and the beast were trapped in bodies that they were cursed in, right? Yeah, good job. So now we're going to look at the solution. So how is the problem solved? So in the frog prince, the girl kissed a frog so she could get her golden ball. Mm -hmm. And then what about in the beauty and the beast? Yeah, good job. The merchant had to give the beast the first living thing he encountered, which was his daughter. So what is the similarities between them? Yeah, good job. The frog and the beast both needed something in the return for the problem to be solved. Good job. So then what was the theme? What was different about the theme in The Frog Prince? Yeah, the princess loses her ball and has to kiss a frog to get it back. Yucky. And then what about in Beauty and the Beast? Yeah, good job. The merchant took a rose from the beast's, beast's garden and he has to give, it, give him his daughter so he won't be killed. So how is the theme, the main topic of them, similar? Yeah, in both stories, they end up getting married. The princess marries a frog that turns into a prince. And the beauty marries the prince who was once a beast. The theme, both of them had curses that they were put in bodies that they weren't supposed to be in. But the princess and beauty didn't know that, did they? No. So in both those stories... There are many similarities and there's many differences. And we want to look at those when we're looking at two different stories if we want to compare and contrast them. Because comparing and contrasting can let us know how the stories are similar and what is the difference between them and how we can relate them to each other. So when, so now what we are going to do is I'm going to have you guys look at your stories and I want your, I'm going to give you two different stories that you guys are going to have to read and I want you guys to read through them thoroughly really good and I want you to do what we said with finding the characters the problem the solution and the theme and I want you guys to do your different colors so the red the blue the green and the yellow for those four topics and then there's going to be a chart that we have you fill out in the first box is going to say the characters so how are the characters alike and how are they different so you're going to have to say how they're alike and how they are different and then we are going to look at the problem and what's the problem and how is it alike and how's it different the solution how's the pr problem solved and how's it alike and how's it different and the theme what is the main topic How's it alike and how's it different? We are going to do that for the rest of the day today. And then we are going to come back for it tomorrow. And we're going to go over that and see how you guys did. So you guys, if you don't get it done today, you can take it home for homework and finish it. You guys did really great today. And I hope you guys have a great day.